Zero dollars in your bank account, socially dis- Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Zero dollars in your bank account, socially disconnected, low mental health, Bruh. and an unusual talent for designing PowerPoint slides. If that describes you, then you might also be interested in arguing with stupid designers or waiting four days for a backend developer to give you a failing endpoint. If that sounds fun, you're gonna become a fantastic frontend developer. But how can I start? Well, I gathered the best frontend roadmap. I've prepared a roadmap that you can follow. Two roads can take us to becoming a frontend developer, mobile and web development. Actually both. <laughs> Let's start with the web and then I explain why I did that. I also might go quick with my words. You may wanna relax and take notes to get the most out of this video. Let's start web development with HTML to display some basic elements on the screen. Next, you need to learn CSS to give a style to your HTML and beautify its life, just like what you guys are doing to the environment. Although you see some elements on the screen, doesn't mean you're a programmer. You haven't started yet. I know. You can start with JavaScript. Some people tend to skip this part and it's completely fine. Yeah, it's not fine and uh, yeah, do not skip this part. Because learning plain JS is a fantastic way to understand how web applications work behind the scenes. Which later can help us have a more clear vision when starting with different JS frameworks. Here's a list of basic JavaScript concepts. After you learn those, you might go ahead and happily create some worthless applications. Like a personal portfolio, a interactive quiz, or a calculator. But I wanted to build a Pornhub clone. But that's simply not possible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? But you can now choose a JavaScript framework. There is an endless amount of JavaScript frameworks and every 4 seconds one of them dies by starvation. Most popular ones are React, Vue, Angular, and Svelte. And since we are choosing frameworks, we might as well just go ahead and choose a CSS framework like Tailwind, Bootstrap, or MUI. Or we can go with CSS in JS options like let's not get distracted here, because even if we knew all that, we still cannot do anything different from creating calculators. The good news is we are closer to our destination. Let's dive deeper into one of the JS frameworks. React is the most popular and high paid option. For React, we need to understand components, hooks, state management systems, and how to to style these components. We have a styled components library to do just that. For state management, Redux is recommended, as it is widely used and can handle any large scale application. This is a list of Redux related tools and middlewares. We are done with React. Final step would be handling API calls. API call? What the fuck even is that? With API calls, you can interact with backend and receive or send data to the server. This is used for authentication and fetching data. Here are two types of necessary API communication protocols. To save yourself some tears and mental disorders, you can try learning learning TypeScript. TypeScript allows you to define types for the API data you send and receive. It adds type safety to your traditional JavaScript code and significantly reduces runtime errors. This is only one of its features and in general it's better to use TypeScript over JavaScript, just as long as it's possible to do so. A additional step would be learning server-side rendering with Next.js. And also let's not forget the PWAs. If you haven't given up already, congratulations, you are now a web developer. Not to be confused with being a front-end developer. There's only one step left. Well this is exactly why I I said, let's start with the web and then I explain why I did that. Because now that you chose React.js, or I hope you did, you can now go ahead and make some mobile applications both for iOS and Android using React Native. To take it one step further, you may also want to learn Flutter which has a smoother and faster performance. And there you have it, you are now officially a front-end developer. And here's your certificate. The good news is that you can now switch to any other programming language related to front-end because you learned the fundamentals. The bad news is nothing's gonna happen unless you build some projects. And with your knowledge, you are now able to create any scale of applications on your own. Well, actually, you need backend too. If you don't want to kiss somebody's ass to handle the backend, you can use a backend as a service platform like Firebase and so on. But using them in production often comes with a price. A free option would be executing JavaScript code on the server side using Node.js. After that, you are now an unstoppable beast. But keep in mind that in programming, it's always better to be good at one thing rather than trying to do everything. But while you're browsing job posts, it might not be a bad idea to do everything. I hope that makes sense and you don't learn it the hard way. I will make another video about backend development acting like this one was so successful. Thank you for watching and have a good day. And good night and good luck to you sir.